in this laser uh, reflector mirror, they ground the um, glass to within a half a second of arc. Now, this is uh, a year ago, for example, the state of the art of grinding uh, glass was about one second of arc. So it's extremely accurate. Now, if you want to go in figuring out uh, that, you can uh, figure out the millionths of degree of span that you have and accuracy of going out and coming back, and it's really accurate. It looks like down here. I think my watch stopped now. Did it? No, it didn't either. Second hand. Okay, if you can just kind of hold it, but I think I can uh, do the pulling. Okay. There they go, sending up another box. That this conveyor is belt is quite an operation. Stand by a yeah. minute. Let me move back. Armstrong now moving back away from the lunar module with uh, his end of this conveyor belt. As it was so aptly described a little while ago, it's uh, much like a... Okay, easy. A clothesline contraption set up on a pulley. All right, easy on the hatch now. But instead of clothes, lunar rocks are being <laughs> cranked right up to the hatch. Okay, I'll get it there. In the lunar module, and astronaut Aldrin is standing there to retrieve them. Now, place the rock boxes, the... etc., inside. Away, just a second. Fasten them down. Have a little more. Preparation for the ascent stage of the lunar module to lift off tomorrow. Two hours, 40 minutes on the PLSSs. Two hours, 40 minutes on the PLSSs, which was the programmed timeline. Now, they did extend that an extra 15 minutes earlier. Uh, uh, both? Okay, it's unhooked. How about the package out of your... Uh Please. Get that? No. Okay, I'll get it. I'll get up there. Do it now? The fill. Okay? Okay. I'm strong now at the ladder. Appears to be wiping his feet. Neil, this is Houston. Did you get the asshole blood magazine? Did you get the asshole blood magazine? Yes, I did. And we got about, uh, I'd say, 20 pounds of uh, carefully selected, if not documented, samples. Houston, Roger, well done. Out at the second box. Official time off the surface at 111.37.32. Arch, now start arching your back. That's good. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. All right, arch your back a little. Your head's up again. Out, off, roll, right. Just a little bit. Head down. And in good shape. Thank you. I bump it now. Now you're clear. You're rubbing up against me a little bit. Okay. Turn right, that's right. Turn to left. Both men now inside the lunar module. They're walked on the surface of the moon. Okay. I'll move your foot and I'll get the hatch. You can hear like they're moving furniture around in there, don't you? Yes, I think definitely that was the sound of the hatch door and the closed. Okay. 
They are still relying on their portable life support system to provide them with their oxygen because the limb has not been repressurized. Okay, the hatch is closed and latched. Once again, the picture we see is lifeless. We cannot see the men inside. Now, we uh, burned the feed water valve. So, and I got your plant antenna suit. Okay, feed water valve closed. In about an hour and ten minutes from now, they'll uh, reopen the hatch door and throw out all the unnecessary equipment, their boots and all that thing, and uh, leave them on the surface of the room. And I suppose we'll go through another period of uh, distorted uh, radio transmissions as their antenna will click against the sides of the limb. Of the going about their choice inside the very crowded vehicle. Yeah, they'll check one another's equipment over and then repressurize the uh, cabin here so that they can uh, get rid of all the stuff. This is Houston, go ahead. Houston, this is Houston, Houston, You're cutting out, Neil. Uh, you're not readable. I uh, understand you said something about contingency sample container on the uh, half engine. Okay. Well, we're not reading you, Neil. Buzz, buzz. This is Houston. Do you read over? Tranquility Base, this is Houston. We're reading neither one of you, but standing by. Well, they were having that trouble inside a while ago, bumping against metal. Apparently, they're maneuvering around now, getting all set up to repressurize. Mission Control trying to clear up voice communication with the flyers. They spent two hours, 13 minutes, 12 seconds. Man's first excursion on the moon, on the moon surface. Both astronauts now back inside them. There is a communications difficulty now between the astronauts and mission control. Ground controllers trying to clear it up. Same kind of shorting out that we experienced, or they experienced, and we heard uh, when they were preparing to move the right here coming up uh, about 2.789 pounds. Yeah. Up to three now. We know everything is working inside. The difficulty, quite obviously, with only with the voice transmission, not with telemetry, because they are getting a clear indication. The limb cabin is being repressurized. Once they get the cabin repressurized and can discard their portable life support garments, why well, then they will be back on the internal communication systems of Eagle, and uh, that communication problem should be cleared up. cabin at 4.8 now. That's about where they want it. You were talking a while ago about uh, what a lifeless picture that is there without the astronauts in it. It is uh, the American flag on the moon's surface there. It doesn't move at all. Airless. Nothing. 
and how quickly we got used to the fact that they were there and to just accept as almost commonplace human movement around the surface of that forbidding and barren and desolation, uh, desolate looking uh, stretch of desert. Still have having trouble with the voice transmission from the lunar astronauts who are now back in the lunar module with the hatch sealed. The lunar module cabin being repressurized. But as yet, no voice transmission because the signal breaks up. No understandable voice transmission, we should say. 